Let's now take what we learned about the five senses of the horse and put that together with some information we have on their evolution and history and work out how the horse perceives the world through their eyes. Perception is the way something's understood or interpreted. It's our ability to become aware of something through the use of our senses. Horses are extremely perceptive creatures. So by understanding their sensory perception, um, the sensory structures and combining this with how the horse evolved, it starts to give us a really good look through the eyes of the horse about how they perceive the world. It's the raw data that comes from the sensory organs and then manipulated by the brain, which actually creates our perception. All species have slightly different, I guess, sensory filters. Um, we can't take in all of the information in our environment. So we have specific filters suited to each species that only allow them to take in the information from the environment that's relevant to them. Through my other videos, I've looked at the sensors in more detail. So if you've missed those, please go back and have a look. But in that, we can see that the sense of vision is quite different to us. They have this 350 degrees um, and fantastic peripheral vision and the ability to detect movement. They hear higher frequencies than we do. And with their sense of smell, they have actually two olfactory systems. It's these differences in sensors that enable the horse to see the world through the eyes that it needs to, not us. The horse's nature is one of an extremely curious, adaptable and very gregarious animal. It's adapted to live in areas of snow all the way to arid deserts. They're extremely social and the herd is very important to them. One of the big differences is they're a prey animal. It is to their advantage to be constantly aware of any changes in its environment. And it's actually the ability to do this that has enabled them to survive as a species. One of the unusual things about a horse is the way they can become flooded or overwhelmed with um, the idea of fear or panic. They do this to the point where they seem to lose their intellectual sense and what overtakes them is this crazy desire to run regardless of the environment that they're in. Sometimes this desire is so big they seem to not have any self-preservation and we see them run say through fences or into walls etc. This in itself just indicates how strong this flight response is for the horse. It's the job of the horse's brain to take all the information from the senses and make interpretations, associations, and then tell the horse how to act. The brain weighs between 400 and 700 grams. Contrary to some belief, it does have a connection between the right and left hemisphere. So what can the horse do with its brain? Um, they can actually generalize. They can form groups like groups of shapes. They have some ability to conceptualize, meaning you can teach them to pick, for example, the largest circle. They have the ability to learn, we know that, um, and they also have an exceptional memory. Memory is the storage or retention of information. Horses have a very precise memory, in fact, more precise than us. We have the ability to recollect and revisit our memories through our prefrontal cortex. The horse doesn't have this ability, therefore it doesn't get clouded by reliving the memories like we do. Their memory is really very precise. They can remember responses for quite a long time. Just think of the pony who worked out how to open a gate and hasn't been able to practice it for years but magically can open a gate again years later. There are a few problems with this for us and our training techniques. Um, a horse remembers everything that has enabled it to make that response. Let's take, for example, going into a water jump. You go into one water jump and the horse remembers everything about that environment quite precisely. To our brain, we think water jump. A horse needs to be presented with about five different types, at least, of water jumps, so that in their brain they can associate it's the water that's the common thing, and then they will become more comfortable. We tend to think once we've got them into the water once, they're going to attempt every water jump without a problem. 
To understand the horse properly, we need to know firstly, how do they see, hear, smell the world differently to us? But two, why would their brain process this differently? Horses are a prey animal. They've evolved to respond very quickly with their primary defense mechanism, which is flight. Today, that instinct is still so very strong in them, even though there are very few predators. Horses spook not because they're stupid, but because they're smart enough to have survived for a few million years. Horses often hurt themselves. This again is not because they're stupid, it's because they were evolved to live on wide open plains, not in small confined areas. Our job is to use proper training techniques, such as habituation, generalization, to make the unusual much more acceptable for the horse. In general, the development of stereotypical behavior does not indicate, again, a lack of intelligence in the horse, but it can indicate inappropriate management. If a horse doesn't have its psychological and physiological needs met, sometimes these behaviours develop. Horses really need mental stimulation and companionship. They're herd animals. Anthropomorphism is assigning human traits to an animal. A horse is not a person, not a dog, nor a bird. They respond in a uniquely horse way and they're very, very skilled at being a horse. We utilise this as well. Their acute senses make them so incredibly inept at reading our body language. If you haven't heard the story before, have a Google of Clever Hands. Clever Hands is a story of a horse from Austria in the 1900s who was thought to be able to solve problems such as addition, subtraction, tell the time and guess people's ages. They toured the world and became quite famous in their time for how intelligent this horse was until further investigation showed just how clever Clever Hands was at reading body language. Really what he was responding to was the handler's slight tilt of the head, we're talking millimetres, or when the handler was removed, he actually responded to the anticipatory behaviour of the audience. Horses may see the world differently but they learn the same as every other species. So following known protocols such as positive reinforcement, exposure, generalization, habituation, etc., will work on the horse. I think by learning how the horse sees the world, it encourages us to meet their physiological and psychological requirements. So I hope this gives you some information to go out and look at the world through your horse's eyes, understand that they hear different, they see different, and it's all perceived differently due to their prey animal instincts, their flight responses. Remember how social they are, how much movement they need, and by meeting all these needs for them, you will end up with a better partner. If you'd like to find more handy horse health information, Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my video releases. Hop on over to my Facebook page, Kazadans Equestrian, or check out my website, www.kazadansequestrian.com, um, and have a look at my blog and some of my free downloads.